Hello everyone, I'm Jesus and welcome to the next episode of The Road to Old School MTG. So here I just have a couple of packages to open up, like six around there. Um, two kind of you know semi-expensive ones. And this is the last batch of of cards that I recently bought. Some were still coming in. Some I bought after the fact while I was still waiting for these final ones. And then now I have those also, right? So I have nothing uh, in transit at the moment, which is rare. I usually have something coming or going. And so I thought this would be a good opportunity to just open up the final things that I have. I do have certain things that I've saved on the side. Uh, TCG player has a nice um, feature where you can save something for later. and Right, so, but those were kind of cheap cards, right? So, and I have no plans for it. Those are more of what I've mentioned before, just general staples, you know, magic staples that are, you know, good to have in general. Um, but I had no need for them at the moment. So I just did it for safe for later. Um, and, but these are, some of these are for more staples, but a couple of these are key cards towards, especially my, um, Ernaman Ice build. I have three Ice Storms. One of these cards should be my fourth and final Ice Storm. And I also have uh, one uh, um, If Biff Ifrit. The deck that I was looking at, the Ernaman Ice version that I was looking at, has one of those. That's the most expensive card in this batch. This was a little bit over $200 uh, for around like uh, played, light played condition. Over here, that'll be the last one I open up. But I also have, like I mentioned, another Ice Storm from Unlimited. Uh, that was like, around like a seventy-dollar card. Uh, but everything else, cheap stuff, uh, staples, good things, uh, good to have. Um, but uh, with this, it should complete now my uh, Ernam on Ice um, build. So now I have my regular Ernam Ur 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 deck. I have my Bantam Geddon. And now this would be the third variation, the um, Ernaman Ice, and I have one more to go, the uh, X points or Ernamageddon deck. For that one, I've kind of been waiting around because I was thinking about maybe just turning my Bantam Geddon into uh, X points version, you know, take out some of the power. Um, for those who don't know, X points uh, is basically a variation of uh, right, just another way of playing the, the game, Old School Magic, where a certain of, uh, overpowered cards get uh, a points uh, attached to them. So the Moxes have two points each, uh, Labour Alexandria has five points, and so on, right? So, um, and Sister Rico, five points, I believe, also, right? So it depends. There's also different kinds of different uh, X points um, groups. And so they might give different points to different cards. The one that I'm signed up to on Facebook, um, I just mentioned some of the, the, the points in those. So I was just uh, thinking about just turning some of those, uh, the decks that I already have, and just swapping some of the powers and then powerful cards that takes me over the X points allowed. And uh, just that way it's easier, right? So it's still the same deck, but I just you know, swap maybe five, six, seven cards out. Um, but I've been noticing it's actually way more than that um, that's needed. Uh, I need to swap out a lot more than just a, a handful of cards. So kind of like, um, so this made me rethink that strategy. So probably I'll just go with my Ernamageddon deck, you know, the regular Ernamageddon deck and then swapping the cards from there. Uh, that's the way I've been going. I'm placed testing it still, my uh, X points version. So, I'll, but I'll have a, something um, stable uh, soon. And then that's not even touching on the uh, budget um version that I wanna make. Um, for that one, as I said before, there's no quote unquote rules that I've been able to find. Um, you know, like what's budget, you know, depends on the person. 
um, I would say maybe like below ten dollars. So that's kind of like the the guide that I'm going to be using. Nothing that costs over ten dollars, and keeping it more as much as I can on commons and uncommons, right? But if any rares or any expensive uncommons, keep it below the ten dollar range. I think that should be qualify as budget, at least to me. All right. So with that, uh, you know, with those, you know, things out of the ways, you know, and these cards, you know, and with the ones I've already had from before, all those I'm trying different things to get these final builds completed. But I do have my regular Ornamagan deck. I do. I am going to make actually a, a bit of a change to that one. Um, I guess let me share it here. I made um, a picture of it where the deck is all laid out. All right, so this is my Erna Maiden deck, right? The one that started it all. Well, I had a cheaper version that didn't have the Moxes or the the Power Nine stuff, right? Or the Chaos one. That was below a thousand, but then I just went all out and got basically almost everything else. Almost, I only have two out of the Power Nine missing. Time Twister and Black Lotus. Um, but I made this version before I got some more dual lands. So actually, uh, here we have four plane, uh, four regular fours and four regular planes, and four City of Brasses. Right, the, they, that kind of hurt. I don't want to have more than three actually, maybe even two. So I, you know, since I took this picture, I've uh, gotten a lot more um, dual lands for specifically for my. Phantom Ganon version, which includes blue heavily. Uh, but it it will come in handy with this one as well. So I can sw swap the four. And I will swap the four fours with the, um, I believe it's Tropical Island, I believe. That one gives me blue and green. So I still have the four green. But I'll have the blue available so that I can more easily splash. Well, uh, play these two, right? So I splash blue and black. So it'll make it more easier for me to play these two blue cards which are very important cards and i'm thinking about getting two more um in addition two more uh dual lens uh, scrub lens those are gives you a uh, plains and forest gives you white and black and for that one i only want two because i still want to have a couple of planes available right so let's say somebody plays i believe the card is a uh, blood moon right there's a very popular card that turns all non-basic lands into Mountains, something like that, or forested, um, or uh, swamps, something like that, right? But it just turns them all to something else. So that will harm this deck a lot uh, with the changes I'm, I'm planning to make, right? So tropical islands, scrublands. So it's good to have a couple of regular planes handy because that those will not be affected by it. And then I can disenchant it still, right? Of course, I have the moxes here, birds. So, so there's other ways in case I, that card does get played. Um, you know, there's other ways of me getting white mana to disenchant, but it's still good to um, you know have those plays handy. Um, so that's why I just want two. And I've been looking at scrubland uh, prices; they tend to be pretty cheap. They're on the cheaper side of the dual lands um, hierarchy. So, which is good for me because I just need a just I need a couple so I can more easily splash these two black cards here. All right, so that's a little bit of what I'm planning to do. Now let's start opening up some of this stuff here. So let me see if I can swip, swap my camera. All right, so pretty decent. I'm still playing around with the placement of everything. All right, and then I'll share the, um, the listings of where I got these cards as usual. All right, so this should easy card this should be just stone rings from tcg player i'm getting a lot of cards from them i am preferring them to ebay at least for the more common stuff i'm still using ebay though for more higher end stuff that's the that if 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 reads the best price i got it was from ebay so it's you know it depends on the card but it is very handy. It is going toe-to-toe -to -toe with eBay, for me at least. All right, so there I can already see the stone ring right there. 
So why am I getting stone rain? Since I've gotten sinkholes, I have ice storms now. I got four um, strip mines. It's, I just noticed, you know, it's, it is possible for me to make a land destruction deck, which I have done in the past because I'm a Timmy. So I figure, I mean, these are so cheap. I figure, why not? Let me just get four stone rings. Um, and so at least have, I have that possibility of making a land destruction deck. So four stone rings, 17 cents each from uh, revised near mint. So that's pretty cheap. So like for 80 cents, basically I got all four. So it comes in a nice cardboard here to secure it. Um, penny sleeve, and then the four stone rings right here. So it says revised. Yep, look pretty good. Nice. All right, so yeah, these are, that's, that's a nice change of pace. Uh, TCG play, the bad thing about it is, and I guess, you know, eBay also, right? So some of, a lot of these cheaper cards, they don't include, the sellers don't include uh, actual images of the cards. They, they include stock images, which is understandable, right? These are so cheap. There's no reason why they need to go that extra step. But they'll mark things as near mint and it's not near mint, it's light plate. It could even be like plate condition. And that's happened to me in a couple of all these other videos, right? I think if you've been keeping up with the videos I posted, you've seen that occur to me, which is very annoying. You know, if you're gonna use stock images, perfectly fine, but then don't be deceptive with what you're selling. So here, oops, wait, 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 I did not swap, there we go. I keep forgetting to swap the image. So for revised, Stone rings in near mint condition. So, so pretty happy with that. And so front and back, they look pretty nice. A lot of times I've seen some weird things on TCG players. Some people will list something as light plate. And even though the front may look great, the back is all jacked up. And then they'll still put it as light plate because they, I guess they just think people just care about the, the front, but I think that's, you know, that's incorrect. Um, all right, so let me show this particular listing, um, you know, just to be complete and give you guys the full scope of what I'm doing. All right, so four stone rings, 15 cents each, four, and then look at the shipping. Cost me two dollars to ship, 60 cents to get all four cards. It was way more expensive to just ship it to me. Um, but I got near mint one, so, so this transaction was perfectly fine. All right, so no plans on using this anytime soon. Like I said, it's uh, I just wanted to keep it in case I do make a land destruction deck. So this should be for him to Torak. So another uh, staple card, a black staple. And I am thinking about, um, I have gotten a lot of black staples, right? So Dark Rituals, um, Black Knights, um, uh, Sinkholes I recently got, right? So stuff like that. So that so, and then now these him to Torak. So actually I might very well be doing some kind of a black deck. I've been looking at Necropotence as well. They're, they tend to go for like $40. I want the Ice Age version. To me, Ice Age is very nostalgic because that's the set where I really became a magic fan. So I would splurge because I know it's been rep reprinted. Uh, Necropones, but I would prefer to have um, the SH ones. All right, so 44 cents each him to Torak, four of them near mint. Let's see if let's see if that is what I get. So a receipt, and then within the receipt, a little cardboard kind of thing, and then the penny sleeve taped up to the side. 
with the four hymns there. All right, so let's check this out. So these are supposed to be near mint. A couple little nicks here and there. Maybe this is like hits light plate territory, but I'm uh, pretty good, you know, especially for TC, uh, TCG player. Um, yeah, I'm happy. They're basically near mint. One maybe light plate, but you know, stuff like this, you know, like I'm not going to complain, but there's some other cards where it's like not even light plate anymore. And that's when I, you know, I get more disappointed. Oh, and if I do do um, uh, a black deck with necropolis, that wouldn't fit the 1994 rules, right? So I'm playing 1994 old school magic, but there are other variations. Uh, so I think it's called Alice. Um, or something like that, but there's other ones and where you are, you can use Ice Age and I believe also alliances. And for alliances, I've been looking at um, Force of Will, right? Uh, $100 each. Um, right, so that's a, that would be uh, then a totally different um, a set of rules, set of, um, you know, just group of playing. But there are other ones, right? So I've been, everything I've been making is basically 1994 old school. Um, but there are other ones, you know, like I said, I really started on Ice Age, especially. I started in Revise. But when I really became a fan was during Ice Age. So that's why I would, I would join some other kinds of um, old school formats. You know, if I can especially use some of those nostalgic Ice Age cards. Um, all right, so this one came out fine. So let me show the, um, the listing. This, this one actually was from way back a bit ago. I don't know why it took so long to get here. But main thing is I got them and then the listings were accurate for what I received. 44 cents each, near mint, basically, yep, they were all near mints for the most part, four of them. 78 cents shipping, less than $3 for four of them, basically, where I have them already in my door. All right, so that's fine. Right, so all these are cheap stuff. And that's good because a lot of magic is still pretty cheap and that's cool. So here also another more cheap stuff, boomerang. So this is another blue staple. Um, blue is very hard to deal with certain permanents once it hits play. It's very hard for blue to um, deal with them. So the best thing usually blue does is just bounce it back up and then you can have another shot of counter, countering it. Uh, I did have some boomerangs in my personal collection, but you know, not so many, and in not the best condition. So you know, these are so cheap. I figure why not just buy new ones. All right. So a receipt. Uh, this one actually came with a top loader and a plastic, and then the top loader, but the top loader is on the outside. But I've seen that before, it's, that's common, to act as, as a shield. So these are not revised, uh, seems fourth edition, but it should be near mint. 14 cents each. Actually, they have this thing, so I think that's Chronicles. Yeah, near mint, pretty good. Sometimes, sometimes I question, like, should I just, you know, do up close of these super cheap cards, you know, 
because I know it adds to my time, video times. Because I think my videos are long. I recognize that. So I'm thinking about, you know, what, what can I do to kind of like, you know, shorten things. So we'll see. I might not do, do that so much with these more cheaper cards. Who knows? All right, so now we're uh, getting it a bit more expensive, although I don't think I shared the uh, boomerang. All right, so let me share that listing. So, so far, all this has been TCG player, except for the uh, if we free, all these cards are TCG player. So, boomerang 42 cents each, four of them, 78 cents shipping, for less than two dollars, I got all four, right? And they were all near mint. So this one should be four amnesia cards. So it came in a, so this is not just a plastic envelope, it's like it's called cardboard actually. So, cause amnesias are a bit more expensive. So, you know, it's not like a couple cents each. I think it was like three, maybe something like that each card. So uh, the, the, the container here is a little bit more heavy duty to reflect that. So troll and toad is the seller for this one. So pretty happy with the container here, the package. Ooh, but it's kind of close. It's taped up inside as well. Mm. Kind of makes it hard to to remove. All right, I don't want to bend things. So then, oh okay, it was hard because it's actually uh, it's taped in the middle because it essentially has two sets of pockets. Oh, that's pretty cool. I've never seen that yet. So that's a nice touch. All right, so there should be two in each. So from the dark. So another one of the blue staples. Um, doesn't get played so much. Right? So I was thinking maybe just not even get four. But they were cheap enough that I figured, yeah, just, just get the four. Um, that didn't have a receipt. Yeah, that, that one didn't have a receipt. You know, not that it's needed, but it's just a little weird. Um, all right, so if anything, let me reference the, the listing now, since there's no receipt for me to compare with. There it is. So a little under $3 each for them. I bought it for near mint, 75 cents shipping. Well, wow, that's pretty, right? 75 cents and it came pretty well protected. There's some other ones that had, you know, that weren't as protected and, or maybe equally as protected, but they charged me a bit more. So uh, we'll see. Who knows why there's such a difference in prices. All right, so less than three each, but there are supposed to be near mint from the front, they look near mint. Okay, one of them that has maybe light played. Yeah, two of them are kind of light played actually. Um, but still within acceptable um, margins where I'm still happy with the transaction. Like I said, some other ones are like so far off from near mint that it's a joke and you know. So this would be, um, the front two are the ones that I noticed some Issues, you see a little bit scuffing there. Um, tiny things, it's more in the back where you see something. See at the edges, right? All around the lower edges, right? So I would consider that light play because of those things. But the, front's, the front looked great on all of them, but two of them had issues on the back. There it is, right? That one you can see more. Uh, just the peeling, weathering. I think, and then there's a little 
stuff on the opposite side here. So I think that makes it light plate. But still, the other two are near mint. All right, so still fine transaction. Especially, I mean, these are more all the cards plus the dark, right? So a bit more of the expensive side, tiny bit. This one now we're getting more expensive. This should be my fourth and final ice storm. This will now give me the full play set to finish off my um, Ernaman Ice uh, deck variation. So it came in a bubble mailer, bubble inside. Hosea's Hobbies is the seller here. So um, plastic with the top loader. So that's this is a better touch than taping up the top. But who knows if they taped it up also. Oh no, they didn't, right? So it's not needed because that holds the card in place. So the top loader and then penny sleeve, I mean, deck sleeve with the card now. These things I throw out. First of all, I bought a whole bunch of top loaders, so I have my own. And the penny sleeve, same thing. If only if it's a perfect fit sleeve, I'll keep it. But otherwise, I'll throw that away. But these deck sleeves are random ones I do keep just to hold some of the more expensive cards that I have that I'm currently not using in a deck. I kind of like the Mana Vault. That's a $50 card. It's not in any deck at the moment, but I just wanted to have it available to me. So uh, this should be near mint. Um, did that one have a, that one didn't have a receipt either, right? Oh, but yeah, it looks great. Kind of little something there. Um, but maybe I'm nit nitpicking. Fine card all out, all, all in all. Just checking the reflection here. Now I, for the reflection, it's not just for condition, right? Where I can see nicks in scratches more easily with the light bouncing off the surface better, but actually helps me to identify um, um, a fraud, um, you know, counterfeit cards. With that Mox Jet that I had, as I was checking the condition of the card, that's when I noticed just how off the printing of it was, right? I could see horizontal lines, I see like a computer, you know, and I had never seen that in a magic card. So I'm like, wait, something's off. Just seeing it without the light reflecting, just, you know, it looked fine. But once I, you know, moved it to the side, had the light bouncing up, that's when I could have really noticed those horizontal lines. So um, just checking for that as well. But this one, this looks perfectly fine. So I'm pretty excited for this. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, this was, I'm pretty sure this is a near mint one that I bought and I got one. So I got what I paid for. Oh, I do see a little scratch there. You see that? Um, and it's decently noticeable actually. So I don't know if, okay. I mean, depends on, you know, the light that you hit it, right? But I think it's always visible. No matter what I do is visible. Now that I see it, you know, now that I notice it, it's always visible. It, except that depending how you, Angle it might be more or less. So, uh, okay, so not so happy now anymore. Uh, I guess, you know, near mint, it still allows for, you know, a little, couple little nicks here and there where it's almost pristine, basically. That's what I've read as for near mint. So I don't know if this qualifies as near mint, anymore, honestly. It might still. Though. And that's the only issue. So, you know, I'm still okay with the transaction. All right, so let me share the screen of that purchase. So uh, $75 basically, near mint, $3 shipping. So it came up to a little over 80 
for me to have this card. Um, all right. And the other ones are like uh, light plate. I got it for around 60 something. So uh, I don't know. What do you guys think? You know, it's, it's definitely hovering in the near mint to light plate gray zone. Um, you know, I'm still okay with it, but you know, definitely not happy with that scratch. But all in all, it's still fine. All right, so that was that one. And the most important thing I care about, honestly, is the front, first of all. The front is impeccable. But the fact that I have four now. So I can complete that Arnamanice deck. Now, this is the only one from this batch that I was eBay. So this is uh, a little bit over $200. Um, if, 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 if. So the deck that I've modeling my deck after, uh, my version of the um, uh, Erna Manice, it had one if if free card in it. So, um, so I made the leap and bought that card. All right, so it's a little bit. They taped all, so it's a cardboard envelope, which is good. And then, but they taped all edges of the cardboard. So it's, well, which is also good, honestly, but now it just makes it trickier to, to open up. But I just got to open up here so I can open up the flap here. And I don't want that to cause me to bend because right, it's a, definitely a bit more of an expensive car, $200. All right, so I got the flap open. There we go. All right. This one did have um, an image of the actual car. Like I said, for a lot of the cheap ones, you just get a stock image. So the cardboard, no bubble in it, but just, it's still okay. So there it is, looks nice. Yep, if, if you free it, seller is paid above. I actually had, not the, uh, from TCU player, um, I bought something from also, I believe, Beta Bob, and which I was not so happy with. But then that one didn't have a picture of the card. This one has, so I figured give him another shot. Plus, this was a good price. So, top loader, the card inside, penny, oh no, this is a deck sleeve. And there it is. So, yeah, I mean, as long as I can have a picture of the card, then I'll be okay with Beta Bob. Yeah, looks nice, especially the front. Um, so this is like light plate, plate, well, not light, but plate um, condition. So let me show it to you guys. But that is what I pay for. So I mean, I got what I paid for. But I will double check to make sure this is the exact card that was hosted. So there more, you see kind of a bit of the weathering. You see the edges of the corners, especially um, where my thumb is, the lower. In the back is especially, you can see stuff. Can you see the, the little bit of mark right there between the, to the side of the blue and the black orbs? So I got to double check that I saw that in my, in my, um, in the picture. So let me go to the, to the listings, just 
to confirm what I got matches up. Like I said, with the mock chat situation I had, you know, not, you know, this is not personal to any particular seller, but I have been scammed in the past and I just wanna, you know, especially if anything that's this expensive, but yeah, no, this is the one I got there. I see that mark there. So this is definitely the exact same card. And you see all the weathering was visible. So, which I knew ahead of time and that's fine. If anything, it looks a bit better in person. So, yeah. So this was 208 50 cents by our shipping. This was kind of like a lot of money. But I think this also could be um this could cover the uh, insurance cost. Maybe. Right? I don't know if it has insurance or not. Um sometimes this might say so. Let's see. Tracking. What well, has tracking? So sometimes those kind of um, sh uh, shipments automatically have some kind of a insurance attached to it. All right, so here definitely has some things. So here it looks like it's just worn out, but it's actually like it's in the actual card, it's like a smudge. It's almost kind of like a glue smudge that's been wiped away. So let me see if I can show my car. So that, so that is one thing that I think was a bit missing, right? I wouldn't say deceptive, right? I think they try to catch, they did try to capture that in the image, right? You see there, you can kind of see like that blotch right there, right? So it seemed like it's kind of like some kind of a residue got on it. So that's the reason why it's worn out in that particular spot. Not because of card play so much, or at least, you know, I'm theorizing here. Seems like some kind of a smudge, some kind of a residue got on it and then it was wiped away, but it still affected the surface of the back. You know, but that's if you angle things, you know, all in all, it looks okay. All right, so, you know, still okay with it. The back looked better than. I mean, the front looked better than the picture, but now the back looks worse than the picture, right? So kind of like it, it evens up. But I think the seller was trying to you know, catch those differences, right? So nothing wrong with, from their side, just um, it's just hard to catch everything. All right, so, um, but mm, all in all, I'm happy with the card, especially the front looks nice. Um, I do see kind of like residues on it. Though. So it seems like it could be, I don't know. So I'll, I'll look at this more over time, but it's still fine. And the most important thing is that that takes care of that card. Now I have the Ice storm, my final one. So now I'll get to work towards finishing up that uh, Erna Manice, um variation that I've been, that I'm so close to completing. Um, all right, so then other than that, I don't, I'm still looking for the two scrub lens, like I mentioned. I don't wanna get a four, four place set. I will eventually, I do wants to have a full play set of all the dual ends in revise, right? That's the cheapest version you can get them at. Um, but uh, other than me able to splash in a little bit of black for you know, those cards, so I need a bit more, you know, be able to splash those uh, black in it. So I need those scrub lens just for that particular reason. That's why I don't, I don't I'm not in a rush to have a full play set of scrub lens. Just two is fine. In fact, I purposely don't want four because I still want to have a couple of basic planes uh, in the deck, right? As I said, for the Bad Moon, I believe it's called, um, which is a common card that gets played in old school. So other than that, maybe I might bite the bullet on 
the Necropotences, like I was mentioning, uh, Force of Wills is another card. Suchis are another card I've been uh, considering as well. Right, so it's never ending, right? <laughs> Once you get things rolling. Uh, that's why I've kind of been focusing more on the cheaper stuff that's important, right? Like the uh, Hemptothorax, um, Black Knights, um, Connor Spells, um, right? So just staples that are cheap, but that are powerful, that are useful. Because uh, that can be easily bought anytime, and I have them, and then as I need it, I can, I can already have access to them, right? As opposed to me getting them after I already figure out, okay, actually, I could use them. Now I should order them, right? I already have them. So as I see other things like that, you know, the fit that cr criteria, I'll buy it because it's so cheap, at least at the moment, right? Who knows, in a few years' time. Um, so, I mean, I'm still thinking about other things, but for the most part, I'm trying to, you know, settle down on buying expensive stuff. This, uh, these last two cards here, the Ice Storms, like I said, $75, and the Fifty Free, $208. Um, the Ice Storms are and then even the two scrublands, right? The scrublands, I said, uh, those are they're the, on the lower tier of the, of the dual lands uh, hierarchy. So I can get them for, for around the 200 to 300 range for a pretty good condition one or a decently conditioned one. Hey, you even near mint, actually. I did try to win an auction on one, but I lost the auction. Um, but uh, those are two cards I'm to envision getting pretty soon because like I said, it would definitely help with adding the uh, splashing in the black cards that have been uh, adding to some of the Armageddon versions that I'm making. Um, but other than that, uh, it's time to pay my bills. I've been putting a lot of these stuff on credit cards. A lot of, a lot of it also kind of like half, half and half, half I've been just buying outright. Half I've been putting in credit cards. Um, but I've been putting uh, the Ipifrit I put in uh, my PayPal. That one, the nice thing about that one, it has uh, options where you can pay over time uh, without hitting any interest, right? So since I have been lowering my PayPal balance a lot, so I figured, okay, I could just add that one to it and little by little pay, pay it off. Um, but I have another credit card. That one is just a regular credit card. Right? So that one, I'm looking to pay out that one first, um, faster. And then the PayPal, I could just pay the minimum that's due because um, I have a longer period of time to pay that off without any interest hitting, right? So now I'm, I'm in the process of just you know, settling down uh, unless you know, something really, really uh, a really good deal pops up. I think I did mention in the last video that somebody on face in the Facebook um, old school um, marketplace um, page was offering a heavy played library of Alexandria for a little bit below 1200. And I contacted the seller as like within less than an hour of him posting it. So there's some other people, um, but then there was no update is that that listing is still online, so I don't know. I don't even know if anybody else got it. It's a little weird, um, right? But that's you know, it has to be something pretty dramatic for me to kind of um, fall away from my plan of me starting to pay things off. You know, if I get stuff, you know, kind of like lower tier stuff, you know, as much as I can control myself, right? Because it's you know, it's definitely, um, you know, I get excited and then you know, you know, I I don't want to. Uh, wait, right? mainly because you know I already want to play test things, and I don't want to use um, proxies, right? And especially if I actually want to play with the decks, I can't use proxies, right? So, um, so you know, so but if you know if it's something cheaper, I'll still buy things like that. But uh, the scrub lens may be the only things that I'm going to be breaking that rule for, and I just need to, and then unless something like a really cheap. A library pops up in, you know, in for sale somewhere, you know, other than that, right now, I'll, I'll be focusing more on either buying the cheap stuff, more cheap stuff, 
uh, or just you know finishing up the decks that I that I have been getting. You know, these final cards. Now we'll finish up my Erna Manais, uh, and probably also this finishes up my um, X points Erna Magellan version as well, and I could then go to my budget earn them again in version. So, uh, you know, I think I'm focusing more on that, just, you know, deck building, putting the final touches on decks that I've been contemplating, that I've been building towards. And then of course playing, I have a bit of a couple of days break from work. So I'm gonna be using this time to hopefully get some games in and uh, test things out. You know, in the end, this is what it's for. I'm got, of course, I love these cards. Love having them as, you know, as a collectible. Um, but um, everything here is with the intention of me actually playing. So I'll be focusing on deck building, trying things out, playing things, you know, um, playing mock games, uh, but also putting them to the test and playing some real actual games, right? And then uh, when I can, I'll see if I can actually record some of these matches, but at the very least, I can give you the results, you know, talk about, you know, what deck I use. Um, like I've been showing you, I've been taking pictures, right? A lot of old school players do this. They can take a picture of the whole deck. Um, so I've been doing that as well. So, you know, I, you know, if I can have a video to show, I can still show other things, right? And I can still talk about the matches, let you guys know the results, things like that. Um, uh, so that is coming up now, especially since, like I said, these final cards here settle my Ernam on Ice version um, and a lot of my other versions as well. And now, you know, I don't anticipate any big things other than the maybe, maybe the scrub lines, like I said. Um, that's as big as it's going to get for quite a bit, unless, like I said, something unbelievable pops up, which is rare. So then I'm right now I'm in the deck building, deck testing mode and playing mode, All right? So once I have those things settled, I will also make a video, tell you guys some of those results as well. All right, so, but for this video, I'm gonna leave it up to here for today. Thank you for watching.